So cannabis in, I'm curious to know, because I, I have experienced incredible, well, let's say, I'm there, I'm, there may be trade-offs, but benefits with respect to onset insomnia from low-dose edible, I could say cannabis, but in, in this case, you know, we're talking about in legal settings where state governments allow this, say 2.5 milligrams of THC. Mm-hmm. With CBD, it just takes too high. I mean, I would have to consume just kind of a, a mountain of it for it to for it to subjectively help with that. What are the trade offs, if any, with dosages in that range? If you're aware, yeah, it depends on who you are. So I did an episode on cannabis. I also had on our mutual friend Nolan Williams, who's a one of these freaks of nature. He's a triple board certified psychiatrist, neurologist, neurologist at Stanford. Underachiever. Yeah, a real underachiever. Doing a lot on combination of psychedelics with transcranial magnetic stimulation. Talked about cannabis and I did a solo episode on cannabis, which means basically all I did was think about, read about, and talk to people about cannabis for months on end. Here's the story with cannabis. It's, as you point out, it's going to be the ratio of THC to CBD that's important. And for the real aficionados out there, and boy, are they out there because they let me know. Oh, they are. There's also the terpenes. They're yep. going to be the lemon-like terpenes and the other kinds of terpenes and chemicals in these things that are also going to matter. And then also it's going to be smoking, vaping, edible, or tincture. Those mm-hmm. are going to be the... So here's the deal. Smoking or vaping anything is bad, nicotine or cannabis or worse for you than edible or tincture. Let's just move that off to the side. High THC concentration cannabis, of which now there is almost pure THC cannabis available, is dangerous for the following reason. And there I just pissed off some people. But first of all, it does have therapeutic applications for glaucoma, pain management, maybe even some mental health effects, ability to help certain people focus at low dose. But for... In particular, young males in their teens, early teens and 20s who take high THC containing cannabis, there is a much greater like 4x increase in probability of psychotic episodes later that don't ever reverse. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I spoke to the leading researcher on this up in Canada, she told me that the probability that a lot of what we see is kind of street homelessness now. What people appear to be schizophrenic was likely triggered by high dose cannabis use. Now, I'm not trying to return us to the 1960s and talk about devil's weed and this kind of thing. It is clear that cannabis has therapeutic benefits, but very high potency THC cannabis can be a problem. At the dosage you described, 2.5 milligrams, very unlikely to be a problem. Now, psychologically, speaking. psychologically, yeah. speaking. and I mean, yeah. I could be on 2.5. I'm not, but I could be on 2.5 right now, and it would be. Yeah. It would not be some perceptible dose. It's kind of like micro dose. I would feel it, but it would not yeah. be externally obvious. Yeah. Now, the pure CBD cannabis is interesting too. So called Charlotte's Web, I think, mm-hmm. is what's called mainly available in Colorado. I'm told is a powerful anti epileptic. In fact, mm-hmm. parents of epileptic kids move to Colorado just so they can get Charlotte's Web <laughs> CBD cannabis. In my mind, that should be available legally everywhere, given that it has essentially no psychoactive effects. Yeah. There are a few perhaps, but so it's really the, the percentage of THC relative to CBD that's important, the age of the user, whether or not there's a predisposition of psychosis. You know, we might as well be talking about psychedelics, right? We might as well be yeah. talking about psychedelics. And I want to just pause for a second to say a few things. Number one, I don't categorize MDMA as a psychedelic. We may get to that, but just for a number yeah. of semantic and phenomenological, I'll get fancy, mm-hmm reasons i don't classify that as a psychedelic and i would actually categorize high thc content cannabis as a strong potential psychedelic and it has become i would just say the standard the baseline of strength has become such a multiple of what anyone might have been used to Mm -hmm. (laughs) in say the 90s it is almost beyond belief and I do know of one direct example. This is the brother of an acquaintance who had exactly the experience you're describing, which is chronic, short term, but chronic use of very high THC concentration cannabis. And I should say, in fairness, that classical psychedelics can also expedite the onset of schizophrenic symptoms and those who would 
genetically be predisposed. So it's it's not limited to THC, but it is, I think, under respected and overused with the assumption that it's just cannabis. Mm-hmm. And that's a, I think that's a mistake. It's a very, they can be so powerfully psychoactive. Yeah. It's interesting how the, the proponents of cannabis, which there are a lot of smart people in cannabis medicine, including a lot of MDs always say it's not as bad as alcohol, which to me is just a ridiculous argument. I mean, to say that something is not as bad as alcohol implies that, you know, you have to choose one or the other. I think that cannabis has been very beneficial for a number of adults who are through the so-called critical period of brain plasticity. So older than 25, they need some way to quote unquote, take the edge off in the evening. They'll do an edible on the weekend, this kind of thing. That is not what we're talking about yeah. in terms of psychosis. We're talking about kids, 12, 13, 14, taking a, you know, like a bong rip or smoking a joint or vaping a super high potency THC containing cannabis and just being high out of their gourd and feeling like it was a really good time doing that two or three times. And then, and I've seen this over and over again, their parents reach out to me often, in fact, for whatever reason. And then you hear about this person being 17, 18, there's a failure to launch component. They're a a motivated, they're claiming ADHD. They're basically a stoner who relies on cannabis to relieve anxiety and hasn't done much else in the last yeah. five years and or certainly has not managed to keep up with the mean and you know and here i'm sympathetic by the way this is listening to somebody who barely finished high school we covered that in the last podcast so you know for other reasons but i do worry a lot about these super high potency compounds i worry about super high potency anything yeah. i mean i worry but in the realm of of hormone augmentation we're talking fidogia tongan ali not diana ball you know in the realm of of augmenting mood and focus we're comparing very high potency THC containing cannabis taken in a youth to 300 milligrams of alpha GPC. This is night and day, right? It's chemical augmentation of a completely different beast. So I think that it's clear that no cannabis is going to be better for most people than any cannabis. Is occasional use for an adult going to be a problem? Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. I will will also say, add to that a few things. Number one, I am deeply interested in the the therapeutic applications of cannabis and all of its constituent parts. Mm-hmm. I think it is a very undervalued plant from that perspective and I think it is is severely underestimated in terms of potency. Mm-hmm. Just the standard available particularly in, in places where you can kind of get the baker's dozen mm-hmm. <laughs> of mm-hmm. any number of strains, Beta Colorado, et cetera. It's to believe that you are using something of almost no risk as compared to psychedelics. If it's, if it contains a lot of THC is a mistake. So I would just say, consider it on par with some of these very strong psychedelics Mm -hmm. and just be informed and be cautious about your use. I, I do think that there are probably some really significant applications to sleep disorders. And I will add just for people listening, I have also tried CBN specifically, which has been recommended to me for sleep and have not found it as effective, it probably depends on the specific variety of sleep disorder, but for onset insomnia, that is a product predominantly not of spike glucose, well, I guess cortisol and or then glucose levels, but rather rumination. THC seems to be one of the magic keys in very low doses. 